Our people are critical to our readiness, but recruiting motivated, fit, and academically proficient men and women continues to be a challenge. So the vice chief of staff, Joseph Martin, with some bad news. 71% of the young men and women in America don't even qualify for middle military service, much less want to sign up. News Nation's Kelly Myers in Washington with just how bad this is. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Leland. Well, this is happening in each of the branches except for the Marine Corps. And as you mentioned, for the Army, hitting only 40% of its recruiting mission for this year. Now, that's forcing the Army to cut its size by 12,000 soldiers because it can't find enough volunteers. Here's the Army's top military brass on the issue. The why of what we think is going on right now is we've got unprecedented challenges with both a post-COVID-19 environment and labor market, but also competition, private competition with private companies that have changed their incentives over time. You've seen that with the various incentives that uh, companies have provided. And the Secretary of the Army sending out a notice to commanders today on the issue, saying the military is facing the most challenging recruiting environment since the all-volunteer force was established in 1973, Leland. Now, you'd think that with the downturn that's coming in the economy and layoffs that we keep hearing about, the, the math would get better just by the economic conditions, but they're trying to get people from a smaller and smaller pool to join. Well, that's right. And the pool to pick from, it just isn't as big as it used to be. Only about 23% of younger adults from 17 to 24 are qualified to serve without a waiver to join. That number is down 29% in the last few years. And of that number, only 9% wanted to serve. And that's the lowest number since 2007. Some of the factors here keeping eligibility down, there's obesity, drug use, criminal records, medical conditions, and no high school diploma. And the military did briefly want to do away with the requirement for high school education, but quickly ended that, now focusing on raising incentives instead of lowering standards. And one Navy recruiter we were talking with today saying they have shipping bonuses from $5,000 to $15,000. They added that they're expanding waivers for tattoos and prior marijuana use and using the film industry, films like Top Gun, to try to spark interest. Hmm. Leland? Yeah. All right, uh, scary statistics. Kelly, thank you uh, very much. With that, we bring in Bacha Unger Sargon, Deputy Opinion Editor for Newsweek. Bacha, 9% uh, uh, wanted to serve. Is this a patriotism issue or a class issue? I think it's a lot of things issue. You know, it's definitely we're seeing a lot of the the things that keep people out of the military where they won't meet those requirements, things like obesity, things like drug use, um, things like not finishing high school. These are sort of cross class issues into, across the working class. These are struggles that a lot of American men are facing right now. We know that we have a crisis in masculinity, which, of course, is like being impacted by this. We know that, you know, the price the, the price of housing um, is such a struggle for working class Americans right now. Um, we know that a lot of working class jobs that are high working class jobs like the military, like um, being a cop, like being a skilled tradesman, skilled laborer, a lot of these jobs are struggling to recruit right now because of those, um, you know, other problems that we're facing as a society. So I do think it's a problem of patriotism, but I also think it is a class thing as well. Well, is there also an issue that being in the military is now looked down upon by so much of America? I think about uh, where I grew up and so many families either had members who were in the military, knew people who were in the military, Iraq and Afghanistan, you knew people who died there. Then you go to New York where you live or you go out to the, the West Coast and people are clearly com completely disconnected from that. Yeah, although I don't think it's as bad as it was probably during, um, I wasn't alive, but um, during, you know, Vietnam, where you would have these soldiers get shipped out, not on a volunteer basis, and come back and be derided and insulted by, you know, upper class liberal elites who are against the war, um, you know, spitting in their faces. And, you yeah. know, so then I think, you know, like that, that, that was probably worse then, although I agree with you now that, that we have lost a lot of respect for it. I'm sure that the, you know, the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan is not helping recruitment a whole lot also. Yeah, excellent, excellent point, both about Vietnam uh, and about Afghanistan. Nobody within the military establishment is probably openly talking about a draft seriously uh, and ending the volunteer force. But is there a 
uh, reason to start thinking about the Israeli model of mandatory service? It, does that equalize, and would that do away with so many of the issues we have with America, America's youth and, and change the dynamic here in, in the class war we have? You know, I, I went to high school in Israel, and so I served not in the military, but in a hospital because it was there was a social expectation that even I was religious and religious girls don't really go to the army, but there was an expectation that you serve your country for a year. And um, it was a it was a great experience. And it does. There's a, the social impact of that really cannot be overstated, the kind of social cohesion that comes out of that. At the same time, it really does not seem likely to me that that hmm. I think the incentive yeah. model is much better. I want to see incentives for all working class jobs so that those jobs are are good dignified jobs that give people you know a, a chance at the middle middle class life well there's a social aspect to it uh, there's an equality aspect to it uh, that, that people come in together and believe in a common purpose Israel certainly has uh, a lot more common external enemies than uh, Americans can all agree on Bacha thank you as always it's good to see you thanks so much for having me yeah. thanks for watching go to newsnationnow.com to find news nation on your television provider and don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.